All right. Welcome to uh, part three of the uh, creatures overview drawing. I got a cat who's trying to jump off to the side. So uh, I did um, some work here with the outlines of, of all the creatures. Like I've uh, 12 more drawn since the last time we were doing this. All right, go on, cat, jump. We're going to jump, jump. Come on, jump. Come on. Now you're just going to walk around. So today I'm going to be coloring these all in. And if I have time to show you, I'm going to, um, well, you know, shade and texture them as well. But uh, yes, uh, that's what we're doing today. So if you like what uh, we're doing, go on ahead, uh, leave a like, comment, and uh, subscribe if you want more of this stuff. Let me see if I can do this for um, every uh, beginning and end of videos. So I had a rough time trying to get sleep last night. Don't know why. So I'm kind of tired. Um, I um, know where I want to start story-wise. So we're just going to ease into things, and we're going to see where we go from here. As it stands right now, I'm mostly going to be focusing on the creatures. And, um, yeah. So, um, do enjoy the show. It's going to be a little bit more chill, maybe. Until I get to a part where I get in, like, an actual good story I can tell for a significant amount of time. But for now, this is what we got going for us. I'm mostly keeping my voice kind of, um, toned down a bit. Just so I can, um, I don't know. What's the word I'm looking for? Ease up on my throat. Mostly just to uh, ensure that I can continue doing this without having to uh, rely on consuming water. Which I do have, just not a lot. I just had dinner, so, you know. That's from the last one. Chances are I might pause the video and then come back with um, a full container of water once the two waters I put in the fridge get cold. <clears throat> so... The, uh, the idea that I had with this particular part of the drawing is that I drew four animals from each of the main six main classes of our, you know, general classification for animals, you know, the, like mammals, reptiles, stuff like that. Whoops, I forgot to save this part of the fur. And, um, I'm only doing, like, four for these guys each. Just kind of, like, fill in a lot of spaces. I don't know if you can hear that, but the dogs are going berserk upstairs. Um, yes. Man, that is loud. Whoops, that is the wrong one. Wrong color. Man, those dogs need to learn to calm down. I don't even know if you can hear that. Part of me wishes I just could I like go back and know exactly what time has happened. All right, like four minutes in, close to four minutes, three minutes. Am I going to remember? Probably not. All right, so I already named all these animals here in the folder, right in this particular area. Uh, excuse me, what, what happened? Where is the... The window. Oh god, did Photoshop crash or something? I pressed save swatch and it's not. What? What's happening? Excuse me, sir. Are you kidding me? Is Photoshop really not responding? Alright, let me open up Task Manager. No, Photoshop is still running. It's just bugging out for some reason. Seriously? Are you fucking serious? Uh, 
Oh my god. All right, let's let's close the program and try again. Close the program. Close the f Okay, let me end it through here then. End task. Oh my god, are you fucking dumb computer? I said end the task. Why do I still see this here? Okay, there we go. Finally. Jesus Christ. Let me go back to here so you don't see a black screen. Oh, fuck's sake. Is the swatch still there? Tell me the swatch is still there. No, I'm, I'm back at the Academy on swatch for some reason. Oh my god. Why is technology taking a million steps backwards? And also, why the hell am I all the way back here in my selection process? Don't worry. It's fine. It's fine. I can get it back. Where is it? Creatures overview. Please tell me at least have. Okay, good. At the very least, I saved this, and I, at the very least, all the stuff is there. So now I just need you to not be an idiot. Go back down, and uh, we'll all have a we'll all have a happy time. So uh, first and foremost, let me just make sure that this is where it needs to be. Everything here is a little bit off. I'm going to switch this on over to always on top again. Move this around in scene. Now, if I can please, for the love of fucking God, just take me to where I need to be taken to, you idiot, you fool, you moronic imbecile. Okay. And now back on, not on top. Oh, for fuck's sakes, why is technology so fucking broken? Everything just breaks around me for some reason. I feel like I am cursed. There's just a lot of fucking bullshit happening, and I'm starting to fucking get pissed off. I feel like I need to call for an exorcist, because apparently there's some screw baggery happening. Now you go up, you stupid window, you fucking retarded window, you dumbass cock sucking window. Get me to my goddamn swatches here and now, you fool, before I blow you up. It's fine. It's fine, folks. I am not angry, I'm just extremely disappointed. Now I gotta freaking remember if this is Will Bunny? Yeah. So this creature is called a Will Bunny. It's supposed to be like a combination of Wow Bunny, you know? That kind of stuff. Stupid. Everything is so stupid. I don't understand why that happened. And, um, we're just going to hope that doesn't happen again. We got some stupid, like, RAM issues as well, in like certain instances, so hopefully uh, we won't have to deal with that as well. Also, I'm turning this freaking thing off. I usually have that off, and it seems like having that off doesn't affect anything. So the creature we're working on now is called a horn apocrinar. A horned apocrinar, I don't know if that caught on effectively. Essentially, is like a rhino, kind of, so to speak, but it's like a small rhino, kind of like an um, armadillo rhino or something. The rhino is, you know, pretty small, but like all these creatures in some way, shape, or form have some form of like elemental attribute. You might not see it at first, but uh, they do have some form of elemental attribute. And I don't know if I really want to try to, like, figure it out right now. I'll see what happens. For now, we're just going to go on ahead and do this. Though, though most creatures will probably have a more, um... What's the word I'm looking for? They have more physical attributes than elemental, I guess. I mean, I guess they would have some form of elemental attributes, but, um, yeah. So, uh, if you haven't figured it out, these creatures are all running away. Whether are they running from, you may ask? You will find out soon enough. But, um, I'm pretty sure you already know what they could potentially be running from. Yeah, I don't need to save the eye swatch for this because these creatures will probably not be drawn the same eyes. Okay, let's see. 
So, like I said, armadillo rhino s kind of combination creature. So I'm probably going to have this be the same color as the ear, kind of like armor almost. Going to put the arm up here. Going to put the other arm over there, same layer. Um, stomach's going to be a different color, probably like a pinkish, a dullish pink kind of color, you know. Looks good. I guess. Good underbelly. Still call that skin, though. As it stands, we got a significant amount of um, creatures to color in. But I don't think it's going to take that much effort. Once we've gotten the... Uh, yeah, because most of these creatures don't have like the same amount of um, detail as the uh, main four characters over here. But um yes. Yes, this is the uh this is the way. This is uh going to be pretty quick. I have a, enough time to do this too. Thankfully we finally got a freaking oh, that's the wrong color. We finally got a four day weekend. We should have had one on freaking November, but no. Freaking hate I hate jobs. I need something more akin to my skill. YouTubing isn't exactly my skill. Mostly drawing, creating. I like making games and I like making scenes. I feel like if I was given like enough time to like learn how to utilize Blender and as well as like, you know, get all the intricacies done now the way with, I would be able to become like a 3D model creator or something, whatever. Technically speaking, I already have some experience with it with dreams, but you know, dreams is different. With dreams, they do think completely differently. I have to imagine that Blender has some form of like precise movement thing. Precise like expansing, building, or something like that, right? It has to. It can't be all off of the same, um, what do you call it? Wait, is this right? Is this off? No, that is right. I don't know why that's there, but I guess it's fine. Looking at the, uh, what do you call it? Um, okay, you, know, you didn't have a tail. I think that's the all, all of it here. So let me just save and hopefully this... Okay, good. You didn't screw up. Ah, crap. Um, I'm going to need to get into my head to... Uh... Okay, there. It's, this one is double-click. The other one is more like it. Very good. ER horned apocrinar. You can't see this, I don't think. Yeah, no. You don't see the screen out of which I'm saving this all on, which I think is cool. It's only showing you Photoshop. Alright, there's the horned apocrinar. Now we're going to work on our next creature. This one, um, I have forgotten that the other one I called was a static wolf, not a static cheetah. I think I was thinking about something with Tat and the uh, Gaia Nymphs series. This one is called a uh, Zapfrachita. Yep, that's right, a Zapfrachita. I don't want the names to be like close to like the real world um, represent representation of the uh, creatures, but uh, at least maybe some will be there, like Newt which we do have, and Frog, but a combination, as well as Bear. I mean, I guess Will Bunny, but at the same time, it's a combination of the two. So this one, I can say what um, elemental this thing is. This is a Zephyr Electric Mammal. And essentially, like the name implies, it's a creature with the ability to utilize electric-based spells and stuff. And spells in this universe aren't the same as, um, you know, for like the animals. Spells for the animals, I mean. Spells for the animals in this universe is not the same as the spells that the people in this universe uses. Uh, so make this one more purple. Purple skin, kind of like matching the electric numbness that you would see for like, you know, most things, except this is like natural skin color and not like a sickness. 
That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, whiskers. But the creatures in this universe utilize the spells in a more natural way. In this universe, you can you are you can like yell out the name of your spells if you want to, you know, the typical trope and all that stuff. But you don't have to. And that is noticeable in most scenes where some yell out their spells and some don't. And those that are wondering, why don't you yell at your spells? Like, you don't need to yell out your spells, you know. If you know the make and means of the spell, you don't need to yell it out. Would you go on a... If you were on the battlefield, would you go on ahead and yell out, Pistol Bullet, and shoot at the enemy? You wouldn't. Because if you did that, then they're going to just dodge your attack, go to recover, and then you're like, okay, I've yelled out my attack, they dodge it, but I should be able to dodge their attack, and the guy comes out of cover, and he's like, oh, you didn't yell out your attack. Falls down. <laughs> no, you wouldn't do that. Although I guess because you're fighting creatures mostly in this universe, aside from the, um, you know... I should make this one more silver-like, actually. Aside from the more, uh, uh, less gray, cult members, I guess I should say. It's not like the animals are going to understand what um, Lightning Bolt is. I'm not saying there's a, a spell called Lightning Bolt, I'm just using an example. I probably could just grab up a spell from my Elementals Reborn Nope. And let me see. It's not like uh, this nature creature is going to understand what Fire Bullet is, or this uh, fire creature is going to understand what uh, Piercing Jet Stream is. No. They're going to just stand there and gauge what you're using, and then they'll attempt to dodge it via visuals instead of, like, actually, um words. Of course, I can think of some funny, like, I'm sure I'm like, not the only one who's like thought of uh, creating that one particular instance. I think there is, I know for a fact that My Hero Academia has the uh, whole, um, you say out your special moves to like, for like the, you know, the people with the cameras, like, so the public like sees your special moves or something like that. But I think there was another anime that's, like, questioning why they're saying their moves out loud or something. I don't know. But, uh, yes. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna add a little extra here, because why not? And because this is on the same layer, I don't have to separate it. So what I am gonna do, for this one at least, all the way around... I'm going to take these two, I'm going to combine them, I'm going to turn this into this, you can't see it, but I turn this layer into a intersect shape area, as a pen tool, whatever, and I'm combining that, that shape, which at first was add to shape area, plus with a parentheses inside of it, in case you are wondering how I am doing that. And I'll combine it onto the same layer, because we don't need that to be separate. I I need to like get into the habit of combining certain particular designs on the same layer. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. I accidentally pressed enter twice. Did I press enter twice? Yeah, it was enter twice. Somehow I managed to press enter twice. Um, don't ask me how. I just did. We all make mistakes. All right, so here is the back fur of the creature. Uh, I should actually separate this 1A. My naming scheme for most things for light layers follows a certain procedure. I got one followed by a letter. So like, so this is, this right here is um, 1B and this right here is 1A. So in case I have multiple areas that require me to like separate it by like numbers, but I don't want to like separate all of it by numbers. I, at the very least, have an, a way to like separate certain like setups. Like, okay, so in, for instance, if there was like, okay, I don't know if a good way to like explain this properly, but uh, 
It has helped on certain occasions. I will say that. So as long as it's very helpful for me, it doesn't exactly matter for you guys because you can't even see the uh, layers thing over here. But I kind of wishes you could. I'm, I'm pretty sure there might be a way for me to do that, but I just don't really know what or how to do that effectively without like screwing anything up, but it's fine. You don't really need to see all of the intricate background stuff. All you really need to see in all actuality, I need to tell this, is the drawing itself, which is still showing properly. And you do see the mouse in certain areas. I don't think you can see the mouse here. You might be able to. But the way this is all set up, I can't see it on here for some reason. But maybe that's because it's... Yeah, that, that would make sense. Maybe it's because the Photoshop layer is not there, and of course the mouse wouldn't show. Alright, so there's the zap for Cheetar. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna save, just in case. Okay, good. You didn't screw up this time. Uh, you know, I could have probably used a creature from here. So, I mean, I have to, I'm definitely gonna have to use a few creatures here, obviously. Or at least one. I might have one that's different. Um, alright, there's the whisker. I'm trying my best not to go back to a certain area, so let me call this a basic bitch white. Basic white. And now we're gonna go over to the wall bear. A combination of a walrus and a bear. You know? Because why not? Part of me feels like I probably could have done a little bit more with this creature, but it's fine for now. It doesn't exactly matter too much just yet. All right, so I'm making the jaw. I'm gonna make the, the tusk over here. At least I think that's called a tusk. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna make that a little bit yellowish. You can barely even see the, uh, the creature's tusk here. <sighs> Kind of like SUV. Man, I had a hard time trying to sleep last night. I think I've said this before in a previous, I don't know why I'm trying to say this, in a previous video. Freaking these stupid adrenaline rushes just coming out of nowhere while I'm trying to sleep. It's annoying. I'm tired in every other point, but when I'm trying to sleep, it's like, nope, I'm going to be a dick and keep you up because I don't freaking know how to stop being an, an idiot. I really wish it would just stop. He's freaking... And I'm wondering if it's because of, like, freaking... Something very specific. Got a broken freaking window that I gotta try to finish. That's why I usually have this blanket on, because it's so goddamn cold in here. Now we actually have the time this weekend, we might just be able to uh, fix it. Whoever built this house, though, was a freaking idiot. I wish I could beat the ever-living shit out of the dumbass who decided to build this house. Because the bathroom is too small for its own good. A good example, uh, here's me, right? Like, at least right here. And here's this and this. Toilet here, shower here, and sink here. What the hell kind of bathroom is this? It's too damn small. It's stupid. Whoever designed that bathroom is a moronic imbecile that doesn't understand the meaning of the word spacious. It's annoying. It's stupid. It's insanely stupid. Whoever freaking built that deserved to get their freaking head crushed in by a ginormous gangstrous toilet. That's right, folks. I'm going there. I want them to suffer for their complete inaptitude of building a freaking simple house. <sighs> Annoyance. Extremely high. But yes, that's the issue. We, we got a craftily built house right here. And trying to find another one is a pain in the ass, like I said before, with two pit bulls and a cat. And the cat has to be separate. The cat's entering loaf mode, it would appear. Or she's rolled up in a, a loaf-like shape pattern or something. Alright, that'll work. 
A wall there. Simple enough. Nothing too complex, nothing too massive. Besides, most of these creatures here aren't necessarily, you know, big enough to really show in the entirety of the aspect. Whoops. Okay. So there's the, um, the mammals. Next up, we're going to go over to the, um, amphibians. Well, if I start right here, is a flow frog. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna have this be the S, the uh, under skin actually. And uh, I'm gonna have this be more of a tealish green color. That's the wrong one. This one. Yes. So, um. The flow frog is quite obviously in, um water type creature. Maybe it could be a combination of uh, Zephyr Wind and uh, Aqua Water. And here's why it would be a combination of that. So what this creature does is it inhales a bunch of water and puts it into his neck sack? I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for, but neck sack. And, um, what it does is it floats in the air. It, uh, it's essentially like, uh, helium almost. So, um... too tired. <laughs> so what it does is it uses its legs to jump up. enough force to be able to get it to jump up high enough in the air. And because it's light, it's able to jump up pretty uh, quickly. Pretty quickly, indeed. And, um, it uh, then inhales a bunch of air surrounding it. Once it does that, its gullet fills up, and then it, um, floats. Essentially kind of a, um, you know, a ball, a ball of air, somewhat, so to speak. As it floats, it then kind of just, you know, depending on where its body is moved in its trajectory, it'll either slowly glide down, or if this frog is running, like in this instance, it will continuously follow the path as if it's resistant by air until it gets to a point where the air resistance starts to catch up. Okay, I'm going to call these prongs since, you know, certain reasons. The air resistance catch up a little bit, but it does give the frog a boost. So it kind of like does this, jumps, inflates, like inflates slowly then it jumps again. It's kind of like a certain um, emotion. Um... Obviously, this frog, if this is its main ability, knows how to utilize it and basically does it at a natural instance, natural standpoint. And it'll continuously move until it gets out of danger. Alright, now for the eyes. I don't know if you could hear that, but there was crack a lot. Oh God. I'm so tired. I don't even know how many hours of sleep I got here. Not a lot, that's for certain. This one I will save the eyes for. And, uh, yes. No, wait. Do I need to... Wait, I think I could just do this and then we're fine. Awesome. No, do not save the black swatch. We don't need to save the black swatch. That's already a pretty much default key of the, num the letter D, not the number D. Number D. Number T. Yeah. 
Anybody got that reference? Probably not. Whoops, I forgot to say. Well, okay, I probably could have just typed it there because unlike the others, I could actually see the name instead of having to scroll for it, but it's fine. I'll just do this. Okay. Next up, it seems like what we have is the Neon Newt. <clears throat> So I'm not entirely too sure what the plan here it's, it was with the Neon Newt. Uh, it's kind of like a black and orange look that I had in mind. Yeah. So uh, skin number one. So the Neon Newt is a, a creature. An amphibious creature. That, um... Oh. Uh, wait, hold on. I, I forgot a very important tidbit here. I'll use this for the uh, the upper part. There we go. Okay, cool. Back over to the Neon Newt. Oh, God. There's so much going on here now that everything is going slowly. Trying to uh, uh, bring... Oh, wait, no. This one. Almost? It's got to be bright. That's not what I want you to do at all. There we go. Ugh. Anyways, where was I? So the Neon Newt is a pyroplasma type um, creature. Goes to show that even if they are amphibian, they can also be pyro. I would imagine that this creature is immune to um, a lava given its um, specific design. I'll call this one Prong or something, I don't know. Even though these are technically, I'm calling it its ears, but it's technically its horn. Um, okay, right, right. I forgot about a very important tidbit here. Um, orange underbelly, black oversight or whatever the hell it's called but it's easy enough to add in go to here i understand why it doesn't uh you know i mean yes select the whole thing and then it does it but maybe you could you could have programmed it to uh, select the whole thing nothing but the whole thing oh and i guess what i could do for this one even though you might be in the way for that that part so i guess it doesn't exactly matter if that's not connected or not Yes, yes indeed, indubitably. Whoops, I did not mean to do that, you fool, you screwed up. Okay, there we go. Thankfully, that's a good exploit I can use there. Um, oh god, I just pressed the wrong button. I pressed Alt. Oh, Alt is cut? Excuse me? Wait a minute, hold on, let me, let me, let me do something for a second. Alt? Oh, I didn't know you could do that. So apparently if I press Alt on one of the swatches up here, the Alt click, I can get rid of it. That's useful to know. Am I going to be able to utilize that effectively? I don't know. Am I going to remember to use that? Well, it's not like, um, it's not like I'm able to simply, you know, I can't even move these swatches here. I'd have to go into the preset, but I don't I don't think there is anything here that I can utilize to actually move that all. Okay, uh, back to what we were doing before. Let's not get distracted here. I do want to try to complete this soon. So, um, yes. As I was saying before, his Neon Newt is essentially a plasma-based creature. And it swims in lava, like I've said before. I think you probably locate these creatures closer to, like, the shallower parts of a volcanic region, close to water, but near lava. And you know, volcanoes have those types of things. And obviously there's more areas than just like the one volcano that I've made so far. I mean, obviously we got a bunch of volcanoes on the planet. Matter of fact, let me, let's do some quick check. How many volcanoes are in the world? 
Jesus, there are about 1,350 potentially active volcanoes worldwide. Seriously? And about 500 of those have erupted in historical times. Interesting. There's a lot of volcanoes. And don't forget, the entirety of the world, I'm pretty sure I've told you that this particular world is flat. Um, where is this? Why is this not showing? Oh, that's right. This is leg, right? I call those something else other than leg. I call those arms. Technically speaking, that's not arms, but you know what? Screw animal biology. I'm going to stick with what I have currently and just call them legs and arms. Is it? Uh, there should be a way to be able to easily differentiate the parts of certain animal bodies. Unless it's like these guys over here, which have multiple limbs, but I guess you probably call it like one leg, one. Oh, perfect example. Uh, this is leg. Wait, no, wrong creature. This is leg 1A, and that's leg 2A. And that will still be considered arm. Okay, so um, Neon Newt is now completed. I think I'm going to combine these two together. Two ends, Neon Newt. It almost does sound like a unique creature, Neon Newt. Doesn't even sound like Neon and Newt combined. Okay, so next up is the... Uh, it's a strange creature, but I don't exactly know what it's supposed to be um, <clears throat> representing amphibian-wise. You know, now that I'm looking about it, it almost looks like the precursor to... Uh, hold on. I'm going to have to look this up. Um, Al... Kazam? S slow uh, evolutions whatever the thing is called maybe not that D drowsy drowsy no definitely not that it was something else drowse drowsy yes i was correct somehow almost looks like that i wonder what he is based off of maybe an elephant but this ain't no elephant whoops i gotta go on ahead and uh, make the layer now this ain't no elephant, and it's probably going to have a yellow and pink scheme as opposed to the, uh, what do you call it? I don't even know exactly what this creature is supposed to be uh, representing in the amphibian trials. Could be any of them, really. I say any of them when it's not, it's obviously not a frog, it's obviously not a new or salamander. No, salamanders aren't amphibious, I think they're reptilian. Alright, Google, help me out. Are sal salam salamanders reptiles? Or amphibian? Oh no, salamanders are amphibian. Alright, cool. So that means this creature over here, a salam, is not... You know, it's fine. Um, we'll probably just figure out another name for it. So, um, a light pink body. I shall get this thing. Um, I guess we could probably have this thing be uh, an aqua water or... No, actually, aqua ice slash Zephyr Wind Creature. Um, no, no, we need a certain shade of pink. And believe it or not, that is, what do you call it? That is a fluffy uh, skin. It's not uh, like, it's not like, it doesn't feel like skin, it feels like clouds almost. You would be mistaking it for fur, but it's not. I guess you could probably consider it like a cloud-like body with um, slimy skin like a frog or newt or whatever uh, lizard-like amphibians that have the, um, what you call it? But yes, this is an this is a creature you'd probably see like above the ocean, but far up in the clouds. And its color scheme is actually rather simple. 
Yes. Whoops. Copy. Okay. ER Puff Bloater. And, uh, I think it's one more thing we could talk about that creature is it. Just like the uh, flow frog, it bloats out its body to uh, essentially like go rise up higher and then it deflates to slowly descend. It has a certain like equilibrium instance where it can like stay in the air like without moving at all. Okay, and the next creature we're working on now is called the uh, crack shell toy. And what this thing is, is essentially... Did I forget that? Yeah, I forgot to say that. Don't worry, we can fix that. Skin, number one. And the eyes will just be simple black. We don't need to do anything special with that. So the cracked torch shell is a kind of a... Um, a tortoise-esque... Not tortoise. Turtle. Our turtle is... Our turtle's amphibian... I don't think they are, but I'm going to check our turtles, reptiles, or amphibians. Reptiles are... Okay, turtles. Are there amphibian-esque turtles? Or maybe there are amphibian turtles, but you know what? This will be an amphibian turtle. Wait. They are not amphibians, but reptiles. They're right, cool. Great. Wait, what? So they are four-legged invertebrates. Is that... Okay, you know, never mind. This is going to be a special amphibian turtle. That's right. Because, uh, why not? I mean, this is considered an amphibian, yet it's on four legs. This is fantasy creatures we're talking about. There's no way you'd be able to very easily, like, rectify certain instances for certain creatures. Maybe there is, like, an, a, uh, am, what, what, what would you call it? Because, like, we got whales out there that are mammals, but they're in waters, which makes sense. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just this one is a, a newt in a turtle shell? Maybe? A shelled newt. Why not? I don't really care. Honestly, all that matters is that we create unique and interesting-looking animals for this area, and categorizing them all really depends on certain instances. I mean, like I said, animals can be in the water, same as reptiles. Because of those water sinks. Whoops, I meant to hold spacebar and move down, even though I didn't really need to do that. But there's probably a reason why this is an amphibian. Why is it? I don't know. But like I said, we're making a bunch of fantasy creatures. Whether or not we stick to the usual naming scheme or classing scheme that we have here on planet Earth and not in the Elemental's Reborn universe. While we are still, you know, doing that kind of stuff, there's no real reason for us to stick with the usual um, real world s classic system. Apparently, cold blood is reptilians. Actually, now I gotta look this up. Are amphibians cold blooded or warm blooded? Maybe that's. What? They're saying they're cold-blooded, but they're, they, they said the reason why the turtle is considered a reptile is because it's cold blood. Okay, whatever. Even our own naming system is confusing as all hell. Whatever, it doesn't matter. This is an amphibian. It may not look like it, but it is an amphibian. And do not tr try to um, challenge that statement, because this is a fantasy world, and you will always lose, no matter what. Alright, anyways, uh, shell. This will be a part of the shell. Or do I want that to be part of the skin? I don't know. I don't even know why I drew this. This was all going to be hidden anyways. Am I going to remember that this has this here? Probably not. Oh, I made that part of the stomach. Well, you know what? I guess it doesn't matter. But whoops. No, you got to be above that, you fool. So, um... Obviously, this is a creature more akin to water, and plus it's closer to water as well. It's, um, it's going to probably have aqua water magic type, right? So, yes, that's probably what it's going to have. Why not? An amphibious turtle. 
Strange, isn't it? Ah, crap. I forgot to go and grab this. You know, it's weird that this is working fine now all of a sudden. Like something bugged out and I had to like close Photoshop to fix it. I haven't got that ran out of RAM problems. So I think all I had to do was just close the program and reopen it. And I thought it was always the history that was the issue and I just had to close and reopen it so we didn't have like... No, that doesn't make any sense still because not a lot of the history is even shown. It cuts off at a certain point. All right, whatever. And now we're going to the reptiles. Okay, so now we're working on the, uh, a snake called a lily dragon. Despite its name, it's not an actual dragon. Even though there are actual dragons. Um, I'm trying to think. Do I want this to be this? Or that? Yeah, it looks good. Oh no, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I was about to sneeze though, but um, it passed. Too bad it couldn't align up with um, what's his name in allergy seasons. I couldn't even replicate his voice, but I got the ah uh, chew perfectly almost. Or not the voice, uh, the scene. I couldn't replicate the scene. Right, I'm going to give this guy like a purple-esque mouth. Yes, why not? All right. So a lily dragon. These creatures are probably going to be um, a combination of, I guess, aqua water slash nature poison. You can tell by the insides of their mouth that they are not exactly um, safe to the touch. All right, um, I guess the horns, honras, fool. I'm not entirely too sure if you would consider this a horn. And actually, I don't even know if I want that. Do I want it to be this, bright blue? Almost. I never go for the vivid colors. I should try to go for vivid colors if I want to have like a poison looking esque kind of creature. Most of my colors are very dull. I remember before in the past in the older drawings, I used to stick with the more vivid colors. I used to go either 240 something with everything else being like 30, 0, whatever that is. Trying to stick with like certain skin colors, at least that. Um, ugh, at least that stuck with everything properly. Uh, oh no, the cat's on the- the cat's moving the camera! Oh god, the cat moved the camera! Her fat ass is moving the camera! You need to back up, cat! Just, just, here's like, here's a computer screen and here's a cat just loped up here. Okay, she's not that big, but you-, you she's gonna- you're gonna see the camera slowly tilting downwards. Dang old cat, why are you sitting over here? Why don't you sit on the blanket where it's more comfortable and there's a lot more um, there instead of a hard wood desk? As soon as I knock, the cat was looking just right this way, and as soon as I knock it, she's like, and then she just looks at me. That's right, Cadillac. That's right. Are you moving it? I can't tell if she's moving it. She's in a certain position where it doesn't look like she should be sliding, but she probably is sliding. I think she's actually moving the camera a little bit over to the side now. Okay. Cat, you need to move. You need to move. You can sit anywhere in this area, but you need to not sit on the computer screen. And she just leaves us instead of trying to find a better spot to sit in. Um, body-wise, I didn't really have much in mind for this. I guess what I could do is just add an underbelly layer or something. I don't know. We got a bunch of these prongs here. Although these prongs are probably going to be less bright and more, well, I don't know. What would it be? What could it be? What color should I make that, you may ask? Don't answer that, because this is a recording and not a live stream. 
Also, let me show if I didn't accidentally press 9. Okay, good. I didn't accidentally press 9. It is kind of annoying, though. The caps lock key is very useful for this, but, um... And you realize certain things are connected that shouldn't be connected. Number one ends your entire video, and therefore ends everything. And number five over here is trying to show my face to the world instead of the actual content in mine. Okay, I think this one is the one that I... Actually, no, I, I think we'll stick with the blue. Never mind. We'll stick with the blue and we'll leave it like that. Well, I think I accidentally pressed one right there. That would have ended the whole video if end was still uh, connected. But that's why I removed the end key until we start playing Minecraft. Which don't don't worry, I haven't forgotten about that. It says that I've been very busy with this drawing right here. Obviously, you see how much is being drawn here. I remember I saw on Twitter somebody's like, anybody who draws five hours or something along the lines of that deserve my respect or something because I, I saw somebody else tweet that I, if I draw for more than four hours, your drawing gets boring. Well, son, does this look boring to you? I mean, okay, maybe if you're like drawing only one person, yeah, it would probably get boring real quick. But I, here I am drawing a bunch of creatures and then soon to be the a giant dragon over here with a leviathan here, and a golem here, showcasing all the things. It like, you've seen my 1,000 deviation milestone. That took like a month to make. I guarantee you a lot of people who's drawing would not go that far to draw almost all of their characters. I don't even think anybody has as many OCs as I do. Go on, uh, go on ahead. I challenge you to find somebody else who has just as many OCs as I do. Just as many OCs, and all of which will have some unique dif uh, differences to them. Like, even characters like uh, Genevieve, Sabrina, or, um... There's another character with black hair. Hold on, let me... Uh, I'll just... I could look up my, uh, what do you call it? I am not going to beat you guys with a black screen. I could just go over here and look at it. Yeah, you got Oh, Sabrina. Oh, Brianna. Can't forget about Brianna, the girl that I don't draw as much as, as I probably should. Hell, there's even Mia, but she looks way unique because of the way her hairstyle and outfit is set. Spring over here, that nerdy girl with the red uh, glasses, that red hairband, black long sweatshirt. Brianna with someone similar. I mean, okay, I'm looking back and I think, man, I got a lot of black haired characters, but uh, they all still, I like look back and I think, okay, I have them. This this seems redundant, this character. Oh, there's Envy right there. But then I realize, oh, I made their looks and designs so different that I'm just being paranoid and it's not actually like redundancy, but rather, because they do have different appearances. Brianna's the more outgoing, popular girl. Sabrina's the more nerdy, shy girl. And Genevieve, while she is shy on, like, camera, is a dominatrix with an attitude the same as, um... What's the... that word? I, I didn't even... Because... All right. Here's a little something I want to talk about. Where... Wait, I, why am I making another layer when I haven't even freaking made the... the fur, colored in the first layer for this creature? I didn't even know there was anything more than just Sundere or Yandere or anything like that. Apparently there's a Kudere, which I apparently somehow accidentally turned Moon into, despite not even knowing that that was a thing that existed. White hair, emotionless, stoic-like appearance. Who actually does care deep down for her friends. I mean, she obviously does, even though her friends do annoy her sometimes. She still hangs out with them. She still is there in her lives. Oh, God. I almost threw up in my mouth simply burping. <laughs> God. God. Yeah, God. All right, that has passed. That was a quick, that was a quick disgust. All right, cool. I'm running out of water. But yes, apparently, there's a lot of durace, and I didn't even realize it. And could you blame me? Sometimes it feels kind of redundant. Which I guess makes sense. 
But uh, yeah. Genevieve's a shy girl on cameras and in you know, like a giant crowd. But uh, well, she's with her friends and she's more comfortable with them. Her egotistical attitude self is let out. Because she is a dominatrix, and I do have an idea to draw her in a drawing like that with a Yerusha. Another, another thing I'd like to talk about. We kind of went off track of what I was talking about before and how we got to this, so that's fine. We'll just move on to this. I'm surprised at the strange dynamics that they have with the characters they have. And yet, it still works. Alright, this is going to be fin-like. This is weird, because this creature has a fin. Like, okay, for example, um, Moon and Jayla. They have a specific dynamic that you wouldn't really think they would have together. Same with Moon, Jayla, and Yuri combined. Obviously, Moon and Jayla has, like, perfect dynamics, despite how opposite they are. Matter of fact, hold on, I think I could probably find a Dure thing for this. Um, all the Dure types. Google. If I can find it. Yeah, I think Yuri is more of a Dure dose. Excuse me. A Dure Dure, seriously. Acts entirely sweet and energetic towards every person that they meet. And of course, with the moon being a cool Dure, acts cool and emotional, and but shows their sweet side over time. Sweet side as in, like, you know. You will see soon. I do have an idea in mind for Moon and uh, Yuri in a drawing, but uh, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait until the next invitation period. Moon definitely does have her vindictive side as well, so you can't really, like, utilize just that to, like, preoccupy somebody else one thing. I mean, you can't really categorize one person as one thing entirely, right? That's just something you cannot do. We all have, like, different moods and personalities. And we're very bad, we are completely different people. When we are very sad, we are completely different people. So you can't really categorize that as one thing. Ah, my neck, my back. My neck and my back. All right, we, we just did the flat crocker without explaining. The flat crocker is basically just a crocodile, all right? I don't need to go further into it. Ah, uh, crocodiles, reptilian. I, I know I shouldn't have to ask, ask this, but <laughs> look at that first result. Our crocodiles amphibian. Uh, okay, you're just telling me the amphibians. Our cro our cro okay, good there. Maybe alligator. No. Are alligators amphibian? Okay, well, I, I don't see why that that would work. Are they? Huh? Are they? Huh? Huh? Hmm? Are they? Alligators are not amphibians, so we are on track for this two right here. Except for you, because I think I made you a salamander. But it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't exactly matter. Um, Were you supposed to be above him? I think you were supposed to be above him. But have your arm behind the snake. Yeah, that's right. Oh my god, I wish I didn't have to yawn and take a deep breath. So this creature is called a long limbed gator. Flat crocker. Crocker gator, I don't know. Whatever be it the case, that's what it is. Alright, uh, we were talking about the. Uh, Unlikely a uh, combination of uh, certain characters. Like here's another strange combination that I don't. I think I even told you this. Yuri and Zola. I don't know what made those two have like perfect dynamics, but they do. They do kind of have a perfect dynamic. Same with the uh, Yerusha and uh, Genevieve. <clears throat> Christ and Hyman. Yerusha is like this calm, laid-back girl. Well, Genevieve, like I said before, shy on like the surface, but um, when she's with friends that she knows, she's um, 
She's got that one. She's got the kind of personality that many people might not like because she's kind of abrasive, almost. Oh man, we gotta stop yawning. The past two videos have been just yawn central. Oh wait, right, I gotta make the pupils first before I go to there. Okay, all right, awesome. Awesome. Oh yeah, we were talking, before we went on to this dynamic stuff, we were talking about just how many OCs I have. As well as talking about the fact that some people probably would not sit through this as long as I have. But this is the kind of stuff that I want to do for a job, and I already kind of freaking, this is already kind of a second job, technically speaking. I'm over here making two drawings minimum a week. Two hardcore drawings minimum a month, and now we got Minecraft, but I, that doesn't count towards the uh, drawing aspect that I'm trying to, um, oops, orb, piece together here. I already treat drawing like a job. I just need to figure out a way to get paid to do it. Can you imagine? Don't even have to leave the house. Don't even have to, don't even really need a car at that point. All I just do is sit here, draw, Make Minecraft videos, entertain y'all with my creation. That's the life. Not this damn work life that we have, which freaking toxic work jobs over here trying to make everyone's lives miserable. Thinking they could just take up all of our lives 24 seven. I guarantee you that my freaking job really just wanted to fucking put a, a day somewhere on Saturday and Sunday. But um, a lot of people were getting pretty pissed as it was. And um, they were smart. They knew not to screw anybody over at that point. Although, who's to say they're not going to screw us over next week with the freaking New Year's and all that stuff? We'll see. As it stands right now, the month, the year's not over yet. And these incompetent fools are not going to be uh, doing any smart maneuvers anytime soon. I know. I know, folks. It's annoying. I wish I didn't have to be in a place like this. Even if it does make good money, it's just not worth wasting half my life away doing a job that's just going to make me miserable in the end of everything. I'd rather do something, even if it doesn't make me a lot of money, I'd rather do something I'm going to enjoy than be miserable for the rest of my life. You get such a short life, why waste it on working in a miserable job? Even if you do make a lot of money, it's just not worth it. It's just better to continue to pursue your dreams. Don't give up on your dreams, people. Keep trying. I'm still trying, even though it's taking ages for me to actually get to any more significant. But I'm still trying. At the very least, I have not given up yet. And so shouldn't you. You should continue to pursue your dream. Because if you do, you're just going to be miserable. And what, what life are you living if you're just going to be miserable? Right? Right, folks? And I just hate the fact that, well, you got to get a job in order to, like, continue to do this stuff. It shouldn't be like that. Honestly, life shouldn't be this hectic in the first place. We shouldn't even have to pay to get food in our stomachs. We shouldn't even have to pay to live with a freaking house. Where the hell is life, though, for money to be the main number one deciding factor for everything? It's stupid. And it's why I hope that someday we get atomic manipulation technology. It's possible. We just need to figure out how to do it. Because if we could just make food out of just manipulating the atoms around the air, as well as simply just, you know, make all the building materials we need. We don't even have to, like, make the materials. We just use it to make the buildings itself. At that point, if we could just make everything at our fingertips, why even need money? We could just continue working on our hobbies, draw, make music. Like, games and movies wouldn't be this freaking cheaply made if we didn't have to worry about budgets, right? Am I right, folks? If we could just get to a point where we can just abolish the entire money system entirely and we could just live our lives, you know, pursue our dreams and hobbies and just do whatever. That's, that's the kind of life I wish we could get to. I really wish we could figure out how to do it. But then there's the point that I have with the Chrome Wars universe. 
Because if we do manage to create atomic manipulation technology, you have to worry about certain nations and stuff like that using this technology to make everyone's lives miserable. There's a lot of good to it as well. You gotta keep in mind, something like that is useful to prevent, like it would even prevent the whole homelessness situation. If you could just easily use energy to make these, like, build it. Especially if you have a more, like, clean source of energy. Get yourself, like, hundreds of solar panels, and boom. You don't have to worry about the planet continuously dying out. Actually, wouldn't that be, like, the perfect kind of carbon emission as well? Atomic manipulation? Especially if we find a way to make it energy efficient. We could fix the ozone layer using atomic manip manipulation. We can, like, regrow trees or remake trees. Like, if we figure out a way to advance atomic manipulation technology to where we can make new trees, like, actual fully functioning new trees, then the planet wouldn't be dying out as it currently is. Fix the ozone layer. Fix all the other issues. We just need all the idiots in the world to stop fighting amongst themselves and actually start working towards saving our entire generation. It's so simple. Just don't be an asshole. I say it's simple, but it seems to be very difficult for people to not be assholes. I at least try to not be an asshole. If somebody's going to yell at me, of course I'm going to be fucking pissed off and be a dick back. But that's just self-defense at that point, is it? Regardless of what it may be, I really do wish that one day we could put all of this bullshit aside. We work towards the technology to be able to continuously create materials without having to worry about running out or any of that stuff. To a point where we don't even need to have the money system. It'd be great. It'd be awesome. I would love for something like that to happen. But with the way the world is going right now, and the way everybody's just fighting amongst themselves due to some stupid politics bullshit, it just seems like it's getting further and further away to reach that particular point. Yeah, we just went on a spiel here. The, the fungal... Before I continue any further, the fungal salam is a, a pyro-neon slash nature poison creature. Neon because of the neon body skin, burning skin, and poison because of the neon skin. You know, similar to that thing. I do want to have some, like, cool, like, mushroom-esque kind of landscape somewhere, but um, we're going to focus on other things right now. All right. Mm -hmm. We're not going over to the invertebrates yet, which I made all amphibians, but the other invertebrates is the one in the ocean, and can't really do that yet. So next up is the strand shark, and I'm going to copy this immediately so that I don't forget to, uh, you know. So of course there are some sharks in this universe. Obviously. I mean, it's basically just the same as our universe. And what this thing here is, is a shark that uh, drives to, um, I don't know. It's a shark. That's that's all there is to it. I don't know why I'm trying to add flair to it. It's a shark. All right, folks. It's just a shark. Get over it. I'm wondering if I should make it orange. Yes. Or should I make it kind of a grayish, purplish blue? Blue, maybe? Okay, fill path still. So. Yeah, you sure that worked. Why not? Ugh, my bod. Um, let me see something for a second. I'm, I, I don't know why I'm thinking sharks have white eyes. Um, shark eye. Man, look at this shark eye. Look at a great white shark look you in the eye. It literally just looks like a button. Weirdly enough. All right, cool. Coolio. Whoops, did not mean to do that yet. Alright, so I guess that means you're gonna be white. And sure. Wait, if we're gonna do that, I don't need to make it into different layers because this is not going to change. 
idea. I... Neckerts. Okay, cool, fantastic. All right, so the next thing we're drawing is this derpy little thing over here. A full finned eel. That's right, full finned eel. I'm gonna delete this stuff over here. Um, yeah, right. OCs. We were, we kind of went, went off track in the OCs conversation. I want to continue that somewhere. Um, I got a lot of OCs. It's insane how many characters I've created. It's hard to keep track of all of them, too, like I've said before. But it's nice. Has anybody, how many OCs do you have? This is a good opportunity to arrive some conversational topics if you get to this, this far into the video. How many OCs do you possess? How many characters have you created that you only have created? And I'm talking about like people who like drew fan art of your character. I'm talking about characters that you have drawn, whether people have drawn fan art of your character or not. Right, you know what I mean? You don't need to try to like, like that's a fin, not a fan. Why did I go to fan? You don't need to try to like look further into that. Just how many OCs do you possess? To me, the number I have is unsurmountable. And you also gotta take into consideration like certain characters. You know that one drawing I made with the um um, Moon, Yuri, and Tammy at the, um, Sweet Tea Place. That's a good example. Okay, this is not where it needs to be. I have two more characters in the background, but I haven't given them names yet. But they exist, and they're characters that I have created. Alright, that's all for this one. That was quick. Got a lot of creatures here, huh? There's also that a couple of characters in the beach party fun drawing with all the goth girls in the, um, what do you call it? Wait, this eel has to be underneath these two. What am I doing? <laughs> so the two characters I'm talking about is that girl with the, um, the lifesaver necklace on talking to the, um, what was his name again? David? Joey? I think it was David, the guy who almost looked like Jude from 16, who his entire character was referencing off of. That's another uh, good example of reference characters that somehow managed to uh, become their own thing completely different from the character they're referenced from. I'm going to look it up right now. Is your name David? Show me David! <clears throat> Show me David! Uh, well, um, uh, mm, a stoner? Good, 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 I could. See, this is what I mean. I have so many characters, and characters like oh, whatever the hell this guy's name is. Oh, what's his name again? Du dude? Chilbro? What was your name again, dude? Dwight? Dwayne? That was his name. Right, Derek, yes, who was supposed to somewhat reference. Like, not entirely reference. Obviously, outfit-wise, is completely different. It's like a gamer, stoner guy who's, you know, got the same, like, hairstyle as Jude, except for, like, the beard. Definitely has a beard, but he definitely is a reference off of him, I will say that. And I, I think I've even given him Jude's voice actor, just to kind of, like, play a part of it. Man, I missed 16. That was a good show. When it was like way back when, I think I was even younger at that point, younger than the characters on the show. I remember having a crush on Jen, and there was also Nikki as well. Of course, I mean Nikki makes sense. She's a goth girl, obviously. Well, goth punk. In terms of like goth esque kind of exterior, she is close to it, but with a, some punk mixed in between. And it's pretty obvious that she's one of my favorite characters because I drew her before in the past. Because I drew her when I was 19. That was um, ages ago. When my skills weren't as refined as they were now. I'm talking about Photoshop skills. I mean, sure that I had some like strange looking drawings in the past with um, 
Should I make this be a different color? Yeah, I'll make this be a different color. You know, I might want to draw her again at some point one day. Oh god, there's so many there's so many folders here that now it's getting to a point where it was like as it was before when I was doing the uh, all the characters and stuff. But yeah, I feel like I want to draw her at some point one day again. Obviously, I can't draw her in any mature drawings, like I said before. All the characters in the show are 16, so I'd only be able to draw her in normal art, which is fine. I don't remember. Were there any MILFs in that show? Were there? Were there any adult women? Maybe we can look back at that and maybe we can draw some more adult women. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see what happens, but as it stands right now, we can't draw the three main girls because, as I have said before, 16. It would have made sense when I was 19 because I was only like three years older. And that's like. <coughs> something in my throat. That's like a good, uh, like a decent number away without like it becoming creepy. Or is pushing it after that. It's like, ugh. all right, all right, we get it. All right, you stop it. Stop it now. Cease and desist these acts. Though now that I'm 25, I am leaning towards MILFs a whole lot more lately. Which is strange. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've been going for the MILFs for like a while now, but now it's more hardcore I'm going for it. You know what I mean? Alright, this Magikarp looking fool over here. Um, it, this is a barge carp. I think it works though. You gotta have someone going for the milks because everyone else is going for the underage characters for some reason. I guess it makes sense if you're close to their age. Like, don't judge somebody who's drawing some underage character when they too are also the same age as the character that they are drawing. Because at that point it makes sense. But at the same time, they don't realize that they're making it and they yeah, got the freaks out there and the weirdos who are kind of just like coming in, zooping on in, zip zop, zoop de zop. Yeah, that's that kind of stuff. They don't realize it. And it makes sense because they too are also still very young and they don't understand it. Maybe they do. But yes, obviously. The whole MILF aspect makes the most sense for people of my age. I don't think I'm ever going to go for GILFs when I turn old. I'll probably still try to stay for MILFs. I don't know. Will I still have sex drive? Will we all still have a sex drive at that point? Hmm? Will we? Huh? Or are we going to get to a point where we can get androids and I can become an android and be young forever? You know, it'd be great if instead of our bodies shutting down and turning all wrinkly, we instead become, you know, like our bodies slowly shutting down, but we still look like we're in our mid thirties or mid twenties or whatever the limit should be. That'd be great. It would make getting old less of a pain. Whereas like, you don't have to worry about being in pain 24 seven. So long as your, you know, your physical body still remains as it should be, which is at a certain um, point, appearance-wise and internal-wise. Although if we were to read some form of immortality, it would be great to figure out a way to like remove the aging process entirely, so we don't have to worry about aging and dying. But then there comes the overpopulation nonsense. That could be easily solved with atomic manipulation. Hey, we're back to atomic manipulation. Have you ever heard about atomic manipulation? You can change this pile of shit into an actual edible food that tastes good. You can change this piece of wood to stone because you didn't mean to get wood. You want stone. You can change this raw meat into cooked meat. Although, why would you do that? Because you can change oxygen into meat. You can change carbon dioxide into meat, see, monoxide into meat, all the bad gases, change it into meat, <laughs> right? It doesn't even taste like the meat because all of the atoms that were for from there are now just meat. Man, I really, really wish we get to that point at a much sooner date. 
And all you rich people out there who I know are watching this stream in the shadows, please consider investing in atomic manipulation. Although that is another thing that I'm worried about. Rich people probably don't want poor people. And I'm talking about the really dick-like rich people. They probably don't want any poor people, you know, whoops, this is not supposed to be there, to get to a point where they can get whatever they want, the same as they can get whatever they want. And it's annoying. Listen, bro, you want to be rich as hell, that's fine. But if you're going to prevent people from being able to get to a point where they don't need money to survive, you're going to be a dick in my eyes. All right, we've almost finished up the um, creatures. Okay. Um, yeah, I, th I think I might have brought these guys too far down because unless I want to bring you up, I'm probably going to have to bring you up as well. Okay, R right now we're focusing on the uh, creatures now. So next up is the Pemantis. P-Mantis, P-E-A, like a peacock. But, uh, yeah. Yes, indeed, 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 in fact. Oh, I forgot I could just press Alt-Click. That would have made this... Yeah, that's a hell of a lot easier to clear on everything. So this is going to be a little bit tricky to draw because I want this to be a little bit more colorful. So i got to figure out what everything is to do. Okay, make you I Alt-Click that out. I gotta try to get into the habit now that I know that all click is a thing I can do here. What were we talking about again before we went into the atomic man manipulation spiel once more? I don't remember. Something about six. Oh, yes, that's right. We're talking about MILFs. Of course, MILFs. Uh, yes. Well, I kind of took that subject as far as I could at the moment. So, um,. For now, uh, let's just uh, head back to uh, our characters. Yes, we can talk about that again. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I just remembered a scene we can talk, a weird scene we can talk about. Hey, perfect, great, fantastic. Okay, so um, let's talk about the uh, black dynamite scene. Does everybody know Minecraft and Bedrock, right? You know, all that stuff, Bedrock stuff. So there's this group of scientists over here to, to conducting some experiment, and they had black dynamites in it for some reason. Don't don't know how he got in. He's confused. His main objective to them is to punch the bedrock, and they just need to see if you know he could punch the bedrock. He had black dynamite punched the bedrock, and nothing happened. He punched it as hard as he could, but bedrock did not break. Turns out, not even black dynamite can break the bedrock. So they figured out, yeah, yes, he cannot break bedrock. And oh no, what's this? Pistons moved bedrock somehow? And now there's a, a bunch of lava coming out of the area where the piston was. And Black Dynamite looks down here, says something, I don't remember what he said, and he bangs on the uh, bedrock, angry looking at it. He's just standing there like, Think of like an A pose, but then the right arm goes up the bander, bang on it, and he's like, You better hope I don't get out of this, or else. And he looks down at his foot that's now covered in lava. And then here, here's Black Demonic's like, like zoom, 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 or something like that. Like, you know, the, uh, oh, hold on. You know, oh, wait, where am I? You know, this right here, the, um, this might not be exact, but, uh, oh, whoops. Hold up, let me, let me do that again. You know the, the, uh, this kind of transformation? This is what it, his body does. Like that. And the scientists in their other rooms like, No! Black Dynamite! And then, anyways, just walks off and do their own thing. It's as if they were planning on killing him. And then the scene cuts back to him and in the lava, stuff like that. It's another lava death. Why? I don't know. Why Black Dynamite was in that scene? I don't know. It was hilarious to think in the lava scene, then it got grim. Just like most of these stories. But that was, that was all there was to that story. 
it wasn't that big. That's all there was to that story. Um, I don't uh, think I had anything else in that department. That's really the only thing I could think of right now. The end of Black Dynamite because of Minecraft Bedrock. But, uh, you know how Bedrock goes. Uh, weather is an, an even painful fight in Bedrock. And, um, yes. Bedrock killed the Black Dynamite. I blame Microsoft. I don't think there was another story I had in mind with him. But I am vaguely remembering something that I'm trying to, like, come back to remember. But I don't remember. What was it again? I can't remember. Okay, I'm getting lightheaded now. I can't talk about those weird stories because there's... Oh, God. What is it doing? It's saving. It's doing to not respond. Okay, we're fine. Everything is fine. The drawing's gotten so complex that it can barely withstand what we have currently. Which is insane. There's so many layers and so many creations. This isn't even, this isn't even the freaking final form either. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I remember what I was going to plan on doing here. I'm going to make this a little bit darker. I'll have this be on its own accord. Oh, God. I was trying to burp, but I almost threw up. Don't you hate it when that happens? Hey, Cadillac, like, what you doing? How long are we in this? An hour, 26 minutes. Okay, Cat, what are you doing? You gonna walk up here or something? Can you even see her tail? Yep, there's her tail. All right, working on the legs now. Which is gonna have the uh, same color scheme as this. Now, what this is supposed to be is like, think of it like a shiny bug looking armor. And it's colorful like a peacock. Uh, wait, where is... Oh, you idiot, I accidentally renamed this. I meant to do this, you fool. Fool, you fool! There we go. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you've already knows because we don't have to fill that in, thankfully. Here's exactly a good example. Leg, this is leg 1A and this is leg 2A. And these would be leg 3A and that would be 4A. Well, actually, no, this could probably be 3A as well because it's far enough apart. But as you have already noticed, yes, there is giant insects in this universe. So alongside all the other stuff, you've got giant insects to have to worry about. I mean, we do have a lot of, like, dangerous wildlife in our universe as well. In our, on our planet Earth. We do have a lot of that to worry about. But, um... Well... I mean... Uh... uh do we have, like, spiders the size of dogs? Matter of fact... Let's, let's see. How big is the biggest spider? Oh, wow, you immediately... Are you listening to me, Google? The South American Goliath Bird Eater. What? Wait, hold on. Can reach up... Okay, never mind. Its legs can reach up to one foot, 30 centimeters. How big is one foot again? Uh, how big is one foot? You're showing me miles. And like inches, like, okay, so this, okay, it's not, that this, so this is the biggest spider we have in the world, apparently, about like one foot or 30 centimeters or what, what around that point, like around here, question mark? Uh, I don't know. So uh, just imagine the spider like this, the size of a dog. Exactly. That would be a big note for me in this universe, but, um, Oh, also so small at six. Uh, it's just that right now we're focusing on the uh, big insects because, you know, there are, like, we are, like, showing off all the mammals and stuff. 
but this is like a giant praying mantis. Oh wait, I should call this back instead. And um, I, I would say it's still kind of hostile, even before the um, the elementals reborn. Because in case you haven't uh, kept up with like the lore of this universe in the description. The Elementals Reborn has all of these creatures right here. Essentially just, um... Oh wait, that's a fin. Essentially become more aggressive and hostile towards everything, including of their own kind. Whoops, that's not where it needs to be. So it makes sense, you know, this creature over here would be, uh, you know, even more territorial and more dangerous. Like, even more so with the spiders. I mean, you got those giant man-eating spiders here. Um, I think I should do this with the body here. Oh god, wait, this is... Oh no, that is three, so that's fine. I can do this. Yeah, this part doesn't look like that too much because of where we're at. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on, did I save this? I don't think I did. Oh wait, no, I saved that one. I just didn't save this one. Which I think is seven, or is it eight? It's probably eight. No, it is seven. All right, nice. Yep, right around here. Mm -hmm. A strange looking insect, to say the least. The fact that its body is essentially uh, bright, vivid, colorful, and looking like a peacock. It just means that creatures won't want to eat it, you know? <clears throat> I'll probably use this here. I mean, that's how most of the creatures in our universe, like, survives. They have their bodies be a bright looking color. I'm not entirely too sure about this, but I'm gonna stick with it anyways. Oh, right, I, I almost forgot about this part right here. All right, cat, what is the issue? Come on. Scoff it all out. Let me pat your back. Oh, no, no, you shouldn't attack me. You are attacking me instead of me letting me try to help you. But, uh, yeah. Just like the creatures in our universe, they too have colorful bodies. Man, it's almost taken two hours to color all this in. Jesus Christ. It's insane. I was hoping to get in some, um, what do you call it here? Uh, but it's fine. We got some coloring in. I guess what I could do is, off camera, I can outline and color the, um... You know, the, the three other animal classes here. And see if we can probably finish the background up in that as well. We might be able to. I mean, the background isn't going to be that, ex like, hectic. All right, this right here is a crab ant. This is a, essentially what is supposed to be a, um... A crab looking ant? I don't know. All right, yeah, this is a hell of a lot easier to uh, break off. Uh, my neck. So it will be a red ant, a crimson red ant. Just need to figure out the shade of red I want. A little bit of blue in it. Tiny bit of blue. It doesn't look blue, but what it's supposed to be is the blue value slider thing or whatever. Um, mandibles? I don't know if that's what that's called. I'm gonna have to have these be separate, it would seem, so I... Kind of almost looks like a spider, almost, without the, uh, what do you call it? I don't know, it's called these teeth or something, I don't know. I am quite tired, though. I will say that much for a fact. I gotta get up at like 2 tomorrow. I think we need to leave 20 p.m., so it's not that bad. 
It, it's really important to go to a family and cousin and all that stuff. I will try to be getting this done with, though, however, so don't you worry. This will be done with before, you know, all is said and done. However, um, I don't know how many parts it's going to be. I'm pretty sure I spelled antenna wrong, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. Only I can see it. You can't. It shouldn't take too long. I mean, once we've colored in all the creatures, shaded, textured, did all that, then it's been set. That's all there is to it. Essentially, there's not too much that we have to do. The only major thing we'll have left after this are the three giant creatures in the back. Which, hopefully, is not going to be too hectic. I can't imagine it's going to be. And the background itself is even is going to be even easier, too. I mean, think about it. The Alpines, or whatever the hell that area was called. Distant Alpines. That entire area isn't, like, that full of anything. And we got a bunch of creatures here. And we got some water nearby as well. God damn it, I hate it when that freaking crap happens. It's fine. It's fine. I, I think I need to adjust this just a little bit. Alright, maybe down here a bit. No. A little bit more. Okay, that'll work. So yes, the distant alpine shouldn't be that difficult for me to like make entirely. Okay, cat, what is the issue? Do I need to... Freaking rub your stomach or something? Come here, Cadillac. No, nope, come here, come on. Come on, stop running away. We clearly have some issues, and I have to help. Yeah, there you go. Going to attack one. Gotcha. What's wrong, Cadillac? I know, cat. Got some stuffing issues. Pat your back like a baby. I know, Cadillac. You've been doing this ever since she was a kitten. I don't know what it is. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, you want to get high in an audience? Say hi! Stop trying to look away! Look up here! Okay, <laughs> she's running away now. Still trying to stop, I see. When she does that, she farts. So clearly she has something in terms of uh, farm issues. But, uh, yes. Where was I? Talking about stuff here and there. Alright, good. Apparently that helped. She's now licking her paw. Ugh. God, it's so freaking neck, neck issues. You okay now, cat? Stop scratching shit. Yeah, she's okay. She's now scratching stuff as normal. I really wish there was a way I can figure out how to fix that for her. Dang old seems, seems inconvenient. The dogs just did say that, or the veterans did say that it's fine, like, that's just, nothing is wrong there, but it's just, I still just don't really, I don't really know. It's kind of hard to tell nowadays, especially since, like, a couple of years ago. And, like, a few years ago, we lost Titan, and came the Cloister, and our grandmother later that year because of uh, incompetency. Or at least it sounded like incompetency. Oh, I, I drink all that. Now I have no more water. <laughs> Just feels like the entirety of this world is constantly trying to screw me over. And I don't know why. Why is this happening? I feel like it's just unfair, you know? Why does the world constantly want to try to screw all of us over for no good reason? I say we take life, strap it up, and burn it at the stake. What is this? Oh, right, I forgot. That was supposed to be your hand, but I didn't draw that. Hold on, I can, I can fix that easily. Or I didn't color that. Boom. All right, back to here again. Oh, God, it's taking like a second to load this menu in. I seriously do think that we're all cursed or something. That some bull crap is happening behind the scenes that we don't even realize. I'm gonna do this for that. 
there has to be a fix. There just has to be. There has to be some way to branch off of this bullshit timeline that we are all living in. Oh yeah, this was your ass. Right, I forgot about that. I'll just combine you with the... What do you call it later? Doesn't matter since that's down there. Part of me is kind of wondering if I should do like Valheim videos. But I'm kind of burned out on it at the moment. Still burned out, surprisingly. I would like to get back to it at some point, but there's just something about the obsessive amount of grinding it takes just to try to get to a certain point. Ugh, neck issues. I'd say the best thing to do is to wait for the game to like fully finish once all the contest is made and you know, hopefully they decide to do some like balancing around like a single player. I mean, even with a group, it's a pain in the ass to play, apparently. Alright, next up is the Disc Beetle. Oh, now she's sneezing. <laughs> Catching little sneezes. Oh, uh, yeah. I do hope one day they try to balance the game around, like, single player, if, you know, there is a single player there. Make the grinding less painful. Like, I don't know, maybe like find a few surface copper, not like. Okay, I guess. So maybe make it so that you mine out one entire copper deposit, uh, ground and all, and it gives you all the things you need maxed out for certain, like, things. And though, honestly, I feel like, because there's a lot of decoration to do, right? I feel like they, it would help cut down, I mean, yeah, a lot of the decoration stuff that I want to do requires me to get a crap ton of material. I feel like a good way to cut down on the amount of material needed to be able to decorate certain things is by um, giving us the ability to turn these parts into certain, like, you know how you get bronze nails and iron nails. I feel like they should allow you to turn it into like stuff like hinges. Nails as the usual, same old, same old. Stuff like that. That would be great. Or um uh, copper scrap, like um like scrap. Like uh, you cut the copper down into like scrap like pieces and like and random like kind of like pieces all over the place. Make it so like, you know, you're able to teleport nails and all that stuff. Teleport that and do all that stuff. Because at least that way, you still have to like bring the full on ingots for stuff like creating armor and weaponry. But when you want to decorate, you don't have to travel across the seas to get a bunch of copper and iron. I mean, yes, I get the whole reason for the traveling, but once you get to a certain point and if you're playing alone, it does start to get a bit tedious. It's not like, you know, how Minecraft does things in a sense where, like, yeah, it makes sense. You move them back and forth. And the way they do the portal system in that is actually pretty pretty smart. It's a strange way to make the portal system in um, Minecraft. You literally utilize another dimension to fast travel. Strange, isn't it? But it's, it's nice. At some point, I do want to make another fast travel system in my uh, Minecraft series, but I need to actually, you know, expand out further and go and explore the world and stuff like that. Obviously, uh, Valheim is not something like that. They, the portal they have is, like, perfect for, like, transferring certain stuff, but when it comes to, like, decorations that require metal, that's the uh, painful part. Who knows, maybe they will like do something with that so that decoration is like reduced. Like, yeah, it makes sense. If you're gonna be breaking these into certain parts, then yeah, easy enough. <clears throat> Honestly, you wonder if it would be a smart idea to try no, because then you still have to bring it all over the place and stuff, so uh that wouldn't really work out too well. Oh god, I didn't mean to freaking do that, you fool. Oh my god, I hate it when that happens. I wish, I really wish that this wasn't a thing. I'm literally on the fill subpaths layer menu. I wish that wasn't a thing. Sure, it makes sense on certain areas. But right now it doesn't because you're ruining my fucking crap. But it's fine. 
I am kind of impressed of how far I was able to get into that game without dying once. And it was to the final boss of that version, too. So no, all in all, it didn't really matter. But would I start all over again? Maybe if they change the way certain materials take certain, like, like, okay, maybe give us more wood when cutting down trees and stones so that we can actually build significant places without having to spend hours cutting stuff down. Although I guess there is modding it, but I do kind of want to have a more vanilla way to reduce the um, grinding stuff. I know a lot of people aren't going to like that. And a lot of people on the subreddit seem pretty really pissed when somebody tries to like offer a suggestion to reduce the uh, grind. I don't get it, folks. You want to spend hours getting all the wood to be able to build a house? At least in Minecraft, it's like one block, boom, and you get a whole bunch of stuff. And even in other building games, like, hell, Seven Days to Die is a good example. That one doesn't have a whole lot of, um, how you say, issues when it comes to building stuff. You can get like a crab ton of wood, and if you get a chainsaw, boom, wood is not even an issue at that point. And same with stone, too. That's, that, that's like the kind of like the perfect thing for like getting all the materials. I feel like Valhelm kind of falls short in that department because of the uh, amount of materials you need to build and the amount you get from trees. All right, let me see. Oh, wait a second. Was I going to make you like a bright vivid purple, actually? Yeah, wait, hold on. Uh, open up. Open up. What were you called again? This beetle, right, I remember now. I, I did not want you to be this color. I will move this over because I do want that to be its own thing. This is going to look close to the, what do you call it? But that's fine. Uh, you also got to take into consideration the amount of like stuff you can carry as well. So it reduces the amount of materials you can get even further. Sure, the main horn, whatever the hell it's called, helps a bit, but not that much. Only carry like a stack, maybe a stack and a half. Other than that, it just seems like eh. The game works perfectly if you have a um a group. Like that makes sense. You send your group out to grab all the stuff and build like one house for all of you to live in. When it comes to getting armor and tools, though, that starts to uh, change everything by a whole lot. Like, a whole, whole lot. Because you now you need twice or three times, or I did not mean to make another eye layer. What are you doing? Watch a cat. She's going to jump. If you're going to jump, jump now. Go on, do it. Jump. All right, now, now you're not going to jump. You're going to look at me. Yeah, that would be the downside with playing with other players, because now you got to get even more materials just to be able to get all the other stuff. And also, you got to worry about these things coming out of the woodworks, almost getting the one, getting ready to one shot you, especially if you are build or like, gathering stuff close to the plains biome. And yes, I guess that makes sense. That's a high level biome, but at the same time, it does feel kind of cheap. Thankfully, I haven't come across that yet. The only deaths I've had in Valheim from like the beginning were from trees, obviously. If you did get killed by a tree, then uh, what are you doing? Then there was drowning as well, because let me tell you, the stamina in this game pisses me off to no extent. Hey, they need to adjust stamina by a whole lot. Or at the very least, provide better, like, provide a stamina buff. Maybe a stamina stat. Make it so that if you're running a bunch, doing a bunch of stuff, you bring that stat up. And what it does is it increases your stamina bar, like, efficiency, you know, like, all the stuff you do is, like, decreased even further, and the regen is even higher. That would be great. I don't care if you guys are going to say it makes the game too easy. The game, to me, is more like I want to build a bunch, and I want to be able to build and do all this stuff at an easier rate and feel less frustrated and clunky. I don't care if your difficulty will be affected. Hell, maybe they can add a hard mode for you guys who want the difficulty to be the same as it ever was. But not everybody wants an incredibly annoying gaming experience. And not being able to do stuff because stamina is a bitch is not fun. 
I don't care if they get good. I am good, man. I went all the way up to the final boss with only one death on the final boss. You can't say that with a lot of people. A lot of people are going to get murked pretty quickly. Surprisingly, I didn't really come across too many serpents in that world either, which is kind of upsetting. I was hoping to try to get myself some certain stew, but uh, you almost did it again, fool. Now, this gotta be up. Uh, but I am good enough at the game. I bait it. I build these giant ash. I build a castle that I still like. And let me tell you, there was something very frustrating that was happening. For some reason, my crystal walls kept on breaking down. And that was another thing. Do not you do not build with crystal walls, period. Because oh my god, I had to kill like hundreds of freaking golems to get to it. And the golems aren't even that hard. I know like the strategy to beat them. I I don't go on top of their heads because it's just a hell of a lot more work to try to do that. I just try to perfect block their shield with the counter, perfectly block them with the counter attack, have them stagger, and then just pickaxe them to death. Oh my god, getting the materials to build that castle was a pain in the ass. You've seen my Minecraft playthrough. I like to build a lot. And of course, with the Valhalla Mist building stuff, I like to build. So taking ages to get materials is just frustrating. I really do hope. I like. Don't get me wrong, I like Valhalla. I like it. In the beginning of the game, it's nice, quaint, and everything is uh, neat. But you get far later into the game, you start dealing with these more difficult enemies, which requires more effort to deal with. And you soon realize that you don't have enough stamina or any freaking of that stuff to even deal with them effectively as, it, as you should be able to. So now you're just out there with crappy stamina trying to get by. And I even dealt with a two-star uh, Draugr and was somehow able to come out of that with it, some bruises here and there. And I was only struggling at that point because, again, stamina is a bitch and a half times a million. I really do hope that they adjust the stamina system. I really do. I really hope that the stamina system gets a huge buff. What I'm doing right now is moving these bird layers up because they're down. It's just in case you're wondering what I'm doing off the side. But yes, I, I do really hope that one day, at some point, they do decide to uh, adjust the stamina a little bit more. We need better stamina in that game. At the very least, we need a stamina system that isn't going to be frustrating endgame. Early game, it makes sense for it to be kind of like that. You're starting off as a, a half-naked Viking trying to get by in the uh, world as is. But uh, if I'm in the plains, I'm expected to be able to climb up a mountain, have half my stamina bar gone, and have it refill up very quickly. I don't care if you think that'll make things too easy. Stamina should not dictate the difficulty. What should dictate the difficulty is, um, you know, let's call this feather not fur, is enemy, enemy attack patterns and enemy, I just called that layer enemies instead of weak. Enemy attack patterns and enemy strategy, like the, what do you call it? The foolings, I feel like if instead of like having them be like doing a crap ton of damage, have them be, you know, have some intelligence, have them do like get around you, try to flank the player and stuff like that. Instead of like, you know, being able to deal a crap ton of damage. Although, I don't know. I mean, it, it makes sense because biome progression and all that stuff. I do like the biome progression. I just don't like how going into a biome, you don't know anything about what needs to kill you. Oh yeah, the other the other two deaths I had, and this was like with Duke Nukem, I think, was with wolves. And knowing two star wolf ended Olaf's playthrough. Thankfully though, we got better at handling them. We know not to go into the mountains at night. And um, and once I got into the mountains and you know got my got myself my nice mountain castle. Which is great. I might want to show you that at some point if I do eventually do a uh, Valheim playthrough. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Let me know if you want to see it when the game is like more complete. When the Mistlands and the Ashlands and the Far Norths are more completed.
I do also kind of want them to kind of like allow us to drink the potions of, you know, the ones that give us like poison resistance and fire resistance. I do want them to kind of give us, give us the ability to reapply them like at a certain point. Because that was the only reason why we like died to the final boss because of the freaking potion wearing off and we didn't notice it. I was like, okay, I wish I could reproc it, but I guess I'll just have to try to keep track of this crap. Nope, couldn't keep track of it because my brain's too stupid. I feel like I need to fucking smash my head against a brick wall to get my brain back into the right spot to not be an idiot. Thank God there was only one death and we were clamoring to try to like beat this guy. While it was at nighttime, we were able to get a bunch of our stuff. We were able to kill him before that and it was just one death. And basically, I was doing a hardcore gameplay and I did match. I did manage to get as far as I could at the end. I guess at the end, it doesn't matter anymore because there's nothing else to do. I was thinking maybe I, I, well, I do want to like, there's like this area, this plains area that I would have liked to have like built like a significant castle in with a black forest and little mountain area and a, and a swamp area there. But um, after building that castle, I was like, no, no, I don't think so. Not anymore. After I built that castle, don't get me wrong, that castle looks sick as all hell, but it's not even finished, too. There's, like, one, like, area I had in mind for, like, wood storage, but after I had building all that, I was like, I'm done. I can't, I can't build this castle anymore. I don't feel like farming golems anymore. Why do glass windows take up, like, two for, like, one core? Why couldn't it be, like, I don't know, man, it's just painful. It's painful, man. I don't like. I, don't, I, 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 I was. It was fun for like mid, early and mid. But then when I got to end game, it just started to become unnecessarily frustrating in multiple departments. Like I said, stamina. Anything that requires a significant amount of building required me to clear out like a thousand forests and a thousand mountains just to be able to make a giant place. The uh, limitations of how far high you can build up was also f very frustrating. Snapping certain things together were frustrating. I really, once you get, you play a game so much to a point where you start to notice all of its flaws and you're like, I really want to continue liking this game, but it's getting frustrating. It's getting too, it's getting unfun at this point. The foolings aren't even that bad either. Like, the combat isn't even that painful. There's nothing hard to it. Like, once you figure out how to deal with the enemies, once you figure out how to, like, handle them, you will have no issue dealing with all of them. If I see a two-star falling, my neck, my first objective is to run the hell out of Dodge, obviously. Especially if it's a spear thrower. It's definitely. If it is if a spear thrower, I am just going to hightail it out of there and just find another camp to get the totems in. Because uh, I haven't dealt with them, personally, but I heard a lot of stories about them, and I did not want to end my hardcore run. Hell, even with full armor, I still felt like I did not want to be in this area. I developed PTSD for the planes, despite never having actually died in the planes to, like, common enemies. Bombs don't count because that's not common. Oh, and I'll tell you something, when I entered into a cheat mode for the um, testing of how high I can build certain things, which, by the way, you can build stone stuff higher if you have, like, the metal core wood stuff or some, some like, wood support pillar, which is good to know in the future, but I don't know if, I will, if there will be a future until the, uh, you know, some stuff gets balanced around a single player if they do decide. I mean, maybe if they don't, maybe I'll just decide to, like, mod it to, like, try to make it less frustrating to build. I do like the building limitations, though, but I do kind of wish that there was, like, some way to, like, increase that limitation. I feels like when I'm using the support beams, like, the, nothing occurs. Like, I, I feel like... Yeah, if I put a support beam there, I should be able to build it higher than it already is, but I just don't think there is anything else there to, like, improve upon that. I'm pretty sure some of you understand my grievances with the game. I still like it. I still think it's a good idea. I just hope that it, it will someday get balanced around, like, one person playing it. Or, hell, just balance around the grinding part. Maybe once they have a hell of a lot more content to it, maybe if they do add, decide to add, like, 
I don't know, more biomes after the ones that we have, like a few more biomes, five more or something, I don't know, to a point where like now it doesn't matter if you progress through this biome real quickly because now you got like 10 biomes in total to explore or something like that. Then maybe they'll make it less of a grind and more of a case of, um, so what I'm looking for, a steady progression up. Still have it be a bit more of a, like, you know, combat focus in certain areas. No, not replace. Save, you fool. I also do hope that they finish up um, Seven Days to Die as well. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I should move you up here, actually. Move up. Go on. There you go. Okay, Brian Skimmer, this uh, seagull-looking thing here. At some point, whoops, at some point I will, will make a seven days of death video, we'll see. God damn it, click this, you fool. We'll see what happens. But right now Minecraft is a good start. We don't have to like focus on anything too big or massive. Two hours in. It's insane that we're two hours in, honestly. Like seriously. Two hours in and we haven't even finished the coloring process yet. Man, it's, it's a lot of work. The coloring process of the animals, too. We're not even close to being done. I still have to make the outline for the, the um, you know, I still have to shade these guys. I still have to texture them. I still have to make the outline for the three giant creatures in the back. There's still a lot to do, all right? That just, that's the case, end case. That's, there's still a lot to do. Um, okay, I'm going to give you, like, blue eyes or something. I don't have to save your eyes for this one. I just need to, like, do this. And boom. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, let, let, let me know what else I should like, do gaming-wise. Because for the time being, I'm, I'm going to just stick with Minecraft. I mean, I might as well just stick with Minecraft for now because... Whoops, I did not want to go there. Because, um... Well, we already have a lot to do throughout the months, throughout the weeks. Especially if I have um, more drawings like this, where there's like a whole lot of stuff to do. Imagine if I were to just like record this the entire time. I would have a headache. Oh, I'm getting a headache right now. Thank God we're almost done with this one particular. Uh, whoops. I, or did I save it? Did I save it? Did I save it? No, I did not. Crap. All right, it's fine. Copy that. Or uh, copy, I should say. I did not copy it. But now I have. Okay, all right. All right. Whoops. Um, uh, uh, here we go. Basic white. And now there's only one more left. And let me just look through all these to make sure I haven't forgotten anything to color in. That I can color in, at least. It's like, just imagine these giant-ass insects coming towards you. They're not even coming towards you to attack you. They're just trying to get the hell away from the even more bigger threats up ahead. Um, Butte Bird. I think it's supposed to be like a beautiful looking bird or something. I don't know. That's the, the name Butte. And I kind of have to use the bathroom. Thankfully, we're almost done with this soon enough. Wait, what is this again? All right. Beak number one. He says I probably call that Beak one. Um, I mean, I do believe I might still have some time coming out after the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, Christmas party that we're having. I do believe I will still have, I mean, that and Saturday. I think regardless, I'm still going to have enough time to be able to get as much as this as I can get done with, but, um, as it stands right now. Uh, whoops, I should make that a bit more, a bit, a bit less vivid. These are birds that have eyelashes, so to speak. All of them have eyelashes, no matter the gender. 
just thick eyelashes to try to attract meats with. Mm. Got these like thick ass looking necks over here. I think that'd be their skin. Whoops, you need to be this way. And then we got this over here, which is the, um, what is that? Little prongs or something. Feather like prongs. I'll have this be a part of your leg and then have this be its own thing. It's funny because you could see birds like this on our in our like uh, universe as well. It's just probably like you know not, maybe not the same design, stuff like that. All right, um, we are nearing an end here soon, folks. Quite soon, actually. How soon? Well, I don't know. There's only like a few things to color in here, so we might be ending it actually right about now. There's only like a few layers, like a couple layers now. I'm probably gonna take like a short break to, you know, get my body a rest, lay down a bit for a second, I don't know. Well, mostly my neck a rest. Fish, unfortunately. And the cats have ruined it. I'm just gonna save this swatch here. Uh, do another glance over and make sure I have all of this stuff I need. Mean, I go out. See if there's anything I could possibly be forgetting. Oh god, it's lagging now. There's so much going on. And I wonder if you can even see. You should still be able to see that. It's lagging so much now. Look at that. We're gonna have like a bunch of clouds here, like a little water area here, and you know, over here, kind of like that right there or something. The river over here, and we're gonna have creature there. Yeah, so there you go, folks. The um, the end of the coding process. Great, fantastic, awesome. All right, so I uh, thank you all for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like. Comment what was your uh, favorite part about this video. We didn't really talk too much about weird stuff, but we talked about some OCs and some other stuff. Maybe I'll come up with some other, what do you call it, um, weird stories in between. Right now I'm going to go off camera and uh, shade, texture the animals, and then do the outlining process and uh, coloring of the three main baddies, or not baddies, the other three in the back. And then I'll come back in the part four where I shade and texture those in and hopefully draw and finish up the drawing, draw the background and finish up the drawing and all that stuff. We'll see what happens. Might mayhaps take a moment to, uh, I don't know, play some Bat for Blood for a bit. But I don't know, I, I'm probably going to like get the, maybe I'll get all the, all that stuff done with like before I do that and then call it a day up tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, which is Friday. Hopefully post it on Friday and do a Minecraft video on Friday as well and post it on Saturday. I think, unless I, you know, oops, you know okay, you get what I mean. So thank you all for watching. Leave a like, comment, please subscribe for more stuff like this. I am, uh, my neck, I need to lay down and relax. Two hours of this and yes, great, fantastic. Um, later, ending recording right about now.